uh, to be honest, I'm a little nervous. I never really talk about this on stage, but uh, this uh, has been what I've been talking about this week, so here we go. Um, so I never had a dad. I never had a dad growing up, and here's some facts about my dad, all right? So my dad, both of his parents were professors, right? He had four college degrees. He had four different college degrees. He is related to the Kennedys, and he was on the FBI top 10 most wanted list at the same time as Osama bin Laden. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Have you ever been, like, I can't, I'm gonna be a disappointment both, like, in terms of his highs <laughs> and his lows. Like, there's no way I could reach either one of those. Um, I've only met him six times in my life. I've only met him six times in my life. The last time I saw him was when I was 14 years old, and I truly have no idea if he's alive. Um, I have, like, no connection with his side of the family. Um, from the point I was, like, I would say, like, five years old. From the point I had a personality, I'd never met this person in my life. People always compare, uh, compared me to him. They would say, oh, you're just like your dad, right? Because apparently, like, our personalities and just the way we talk is very, like, identical. So, uh, my whole life, I've never drank, and I've never done drugs, and I've never uh, had fun. Um, <laughs> Because he ruined his life with drugs and alcohol. That's how he ended up on the FBI. He, to answer your question, he, <laughs> uh, he did 9-11, no. Uh, <laughs> um, he, uh, uh, no, it was just Oklahoma City. And now you're saying something that I wish I knew what you were saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's that? I you think I look? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I <kinda> do. <laughs> and I do look like I could be from Oklahoma City, but I'm not. Um, uh, uh, Ohio. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so what he did though was he robbed a drug dealer, and he robbed the drug dealer, and he got caught, and then he went to the courthouse, and he like pled guilty, and then when he was at the courthouse. Uh, as he was being taken away in handcuffs, he somehow got loose of the handcuffs and got free. And then two cops shot at him and he got away. And then nobody knew where he was for three years. And he was in Florida. I mean, that's where I would have looked. But, uh, um, I'm not a cop. Uh, so that's how. Um, anywho. <laughs> next joke. Uh, <laughs> Uh, wow, what a weird life. Anyway, um, so uh, I moved here with my roommate. My roommate I've known since kindergarten. We've been best friends since kindergarten, and that's a long time to know somebody, right? And that also puts me in the position where I have to be the most supportive person in his life, right? So recently he got into theater, and he got a part acting, and he was very excited about the part. And so I went and saw him in To Kill a Mockingbird, and I spent $20 to go see him. And an hour into this play, I did not see my friend at all. He had, and it turns out, he only had one line. I spent $20 to hear him say one line, and the only line that he said was the N-word. <laughs> And honestly, what a deal, right? <laughs> like, I would have paid $100 <laughs> to hear your best friend embarrass himself. What a deal. Like, that's amazing. Um, and put yourself in my position afterwards. I had to be supportive. After I can't say good job when that's the only thing you did, right? That's terrible. He's a white guy. I can't support that, right? You know what I mean? So, you know, afterwards it's more like, you know, like, uh, I hope that's what you were supposed to say. <laughs> I hope you didn't go up there and riff. <laughs> if you did, bad job. <laughs> It does explain uh, why I kept hearing him uh, uh, give line readings in the house, uh, practicing for the audition. I was like getting ready to move out. It turns out he was auditioning. Um, 
<laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> that's gonna be how I transition out of every single one of these because <laughs> none of them really are connected. Um, I uh, I had uh, I had probably the worst first date anybody's ever had. Um, I've I've done stand-up comedy eight years. I've never dated another comedian. I only went on one date with a comedian, and this is how it went. All right, so. We, we met, and we were at an open mic, and then I said, hey, do you want to, like, hang out? And then we went, we went to a park, and we sat and we talked for six hours. <gasps> we really did. And it, we instantly connected. It was amazing. It was really like meeting, like, your best friend for the first time. And I'm like, after, like, literally, like, 20 minutes, I was like, I'm in love with this person. Like, I couldn't say that because sh she was eating Chinese food, but um, <laughs> it really felt that way. We were being vulnerable, and we were connecting, and it was... Truly, like, amazing. And then uh, we got locked in the park, and then we had to get out of the park, and I had to help her over. And then we went to, uh, we went down by, like, the FDR bridge, right? And we were over there, and we hung out for another three hours there, right? This is a nine hour date, and it was just truly amazing at this point. It was truly amazing. And then from that point, it was like 4 a.m., and we started walking back to the subway. And as we walk back, this is the first time we saw anybody in four hours. We're walking back, and I see a man start to take off his sandals and climb the fence. And this is as we're walking next to him. And we go, hey, hey, what are you doing, what are you doing? And he comes down, and he's like, either you're really drunk or like crazy. And I'm still not sure, to be honest. And he, he says, oh, I'm Nick, I live on 98th in Amsterdam. That's what he says. And then we explain who we are, and we talk for like a minute and a half. And then he said the scariest thing I've ever heard anybody say in my life, which is, can you go on now so I can get on with it? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I'm trying to kill myself. <gasps> and it was at that point that I looked and I saw he had a cell phone that was broken in half next to him. And he looked at me and then he looked around and he shoved me and he ran to part of the fence and started to climb it. And it was at this point that I dialed 911 and I handed her the phone. And I know the next part of this story takes place in seven and a half minutes because I still have the 911 call on my phone. And I run, I, I pull him down, and he swings at me. And he misses, but then he runs to another part of the fence. We do this for about two minutes. And, every, and occasionally he's punching me, occasionally he's kicking me, but I still kept pulling him down. And after about two minutes, he realizes that I'm pulling him down by his jeans, and then he just gets totally naked. <laughs> He gets completely naked. He's not wearing anything. And then I, I, I just kept pulling him out. I didn't care. And then uh, there was a few times where he got close to the top, and I yelled at him, like, hey, look away, look away. I don't want you to see somebody die. Look away. And eventually the cops showed up, and he was out of energy, and the cops were there, and I was so relieved that I, I ran up to her, who had been on this date with, and I was so relieved and I hugged her for the first time. And as I hug her, I realize I'm on a first date. I just saved a stranger's life. Like, I look pretty cool. <laughs> like, I'm probably gonna get like a second date, right? Like, how could you not go on a second date with somebody who saved a stranger's life, right? And as I think that, the next thought is I realize, oh no, he had shit himself at some point, oh. and I had his shit all over my hands, oh. and I got shit in her hair. Oh. And then I said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, um, uh, to answer your question, um, we dated for about a month, but it was too intense. <laughs> true, that's true. Um, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, thank you very much.